Hello and welcome to Erudite. In this video we'll be looking at possibly one of my most favourite sorts. It doesn't even use a comparison between elements. I'll post all of the code on GitHub like usual and it'll be linked in the description. And let's get started. So today we're going to be looking at one of my favourite sorts. In fact I think it might be my, my favourite. It's called counting sort. And the great thing about this sort is we kind of ignore what, what the array is. All we're interested in is how often each number comes up. So we create a new array, but it's sorted in the process that we create it. So effectively what I do is I say, okay, I'm going to create a new array. And all it's going to do is it's going to be as long as the difference between the smallest number and the largest number. So the array would be 12 long, so that we can have numbers from 1 to 12. And in each index position, we'll keep count of the number of numbers. And so we would say, all right, at position, uh, well, actually, this is index 0, but we would, we would shift it because we can, we can consider that index 0 is 1, 1 is 2, 2 is 3, and so on and so forth. So we'd say, okay, there's one value of 1. At 2, there's two values of 2. 3, there's one value. 4, there's one value. 5, none. 6, none. 7, there's 2. 8, there's none. 9, there's 1. 10, nothing. 11, there's 1. And 12, there's 1. And then we would iterate back through this list to generate our new sequence, basically saying, right, okay, well, I need one one. So our uh, sorted, oh, sort a array, we go, I need one one, so we put a one in. And I need two twos, so we put two twos in. Because I need one three, one four, I don't need any fives, don't need any sixes. Oh, I need two sevens. I don't need any eights. I need a nine. Don't need any ten. Oh, I need eleven. I need a twelve. And there you go. It sorted it. But the beauty of this algorithm is that it can do it with hardly any passes of the original array. It's incredibly fast. There is a very big limitation to this algorithm, and we'll discuss that in a bit. But let's implement this and see how it looks. And we'll say it will define a counting sort. And it will take the array, like always, as an argument. The first thing we need to do is find the smallest and the largest values in our array. So we'll say min value equals and we'll just use the min function and max value is equal to max array so what we then want to do is we need to think about a uh, array that's going to keep count of everything and we'll call it a count array like so and what i'm going to do is set every uh, index position of this equal to zero for the range between min and max. So we need to do max plus one to be in inclusive. So for value in the array that we pass in, we want to go through and add one to our count array at the correct index position of that value. So what we need to do is find the index to add our value in the index array. And that's going to be equal to the value. Now, if the value is between 0 and an integer, uh, sorry, if the, if the array is between a 0 and an integer, then that's all we need. But the array might not be that. It could be from minus 10 to 4, or it could be from 50 to 100, or whatever. We don't therefore want our index position to be 50 if we start at 50. We want it to actually be saying 0, so that our count array is basically shifting our index positions in how we, in how we read them. 
So if we put this minus the minimum value, we'll always be setting things to zero. So for example, if our, the smallest value in our array was 50, well, we've just taken that value and minus taken away 50 from it. So it's now zero. So our count array is putting its counts for 50 in index position zero. And we just have to remember to add the minimum value when we come to take the numbers out of our count array. But it just allows us to use this property of indexing. So our count array at the position of index plus equals one. Super simple. And we're just passing through our array once to do this. Very, very powerful. And now we create our sorted array. So let's have a nice empty array for this. We go sorted array. And we can say for index item in and we'll enumerate the count array we can add these values or we can extend now we're going to use extend because they can sometimes be more than one so extend and it's going to be by the index oh wait i've done that wrong index plus so we're adding that min value back again so we're we're recorrecting, but it's going to be multiplied by the item because in our count array, it tells us the number of times we need to add this. So that's where our multiplication comes in. And then we can return, return the sorted array like so. Let's see how this performs in a test. Test equals uh, counting sort array print test. Oh, I also want to print the array. I keep forgetting to do that. And let's make it a bit tidier as well. Python counting sort dot pi. And there we go. We've got an unsorted array. Three one seven seven nine two eleven. And it's been sorted beautifully with this really, really simple algorithm. So I think what we want to do is now import random and we'll try this on some better or bigger arrays because there is one Im quite big improvement that I want to make to this algorithm. So from random import randint. And while we're here, we'll actually import time as well, because like before, we will end up timing this function. And so we can comment this out. Uh, I like to split this up a little bit. And we'll make our new array equal to, and just as before, we use list comprehension. We'll make it between 100 uh, for i in range, and I think we did between a th it was a thousand, was it? Uh, five thousand last time. Save it because we've now got a much bigger number, and we'll just see. There we go, beautiful. So let's time this. I mean, obviously, sorry, there are a lot of zeros in this, and that's just because it's got five thousand elements but only randomly between 0 and 100 so you're going to get a lot of every number between 0 and 100. Um, I should have thought of that a bit. Right, let's clear this all up and we're going to time how long this takes. So start time.time .time. and a runtime is a nice little equals end minus start and we'll print something out which we'll pinch this statement for runtime and we can just put runtime in here we don't need to have that anymore and we can put seconds as well there we 
go. Just like before. And we can see how this does. So I don't know if you can remember how Quicksort did, but this is significantly faster than Quicksort. And in the right instances, Counting Sort is blisteringly fast. But it has a, a whole load of limitations, and we'll discuss those in just a moment. However, for fun, let's just let's take this up to 500,000. So that's, that's a lot of numbers to be sorting. We'll save that, and we'll run it. And it's not even taking a second. It's, it's taking you know, 0.15 of a second to sort 500,000 numbers. <laughs> so it's reproducibly incredibly fast. However, one of the major limitations is the range of the numbers. So if you have, if we were to do something uh, where we would only have 10 numbers, but the range was 10,000, let's see what happens there. It's, I mean, it's actually pretty quick, but if I drop this, it's because it's only 10 numbers. Oh, it is, I should have. Let's put this as 100. And we'll have a look at how it does. So it's still zero. At 10,000, it's dropping off a bit. 100,000. Are you noticing how the time it's taking is changing with the range, not the length of the, not the um, size of the array. And that's because when we create this count array, this aspect here, depends on that min and max value. And this is a very key limitation of counting sort. However, it can be overcome in a lot of ways, which we might get into in a future video. There is a little function or a little thing we can do that massively speeds this whole process up. So when we run through this program, and I'm going to keep it, uh, let's just tidy things up a tad so it's easier to see. So we're not so much interested now in seeing the arrays anymore, we just really want the runtime. And in fact, we want to test this without it being if we if we continuously rerun this we get a different random array each time which can have different um, qualities so we actually want to run a test where we use a variant of this counting sort so we'll copy this and we'll call this counting sort improved and what we're going to do is in this bit here if our count array has a value of nothing we don't need to call this at all we don't need to call the sorted array to extend and then say actually it's by nothing by multiplied by zero so what we're going to do is say if item is equal to zero continue Or actually, even better, sorry, let's just say if item is not equal to zero, then we do the sorted array extend. Otherwise, we just continue churning through that, through that loop. So let's take our counting sort improved, and we want to say runtime of counting sort, and then we want to have second output which will be uh, da, 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 da. yep I'll we'll just copy all of this it's not the tidiest I'm just trying to show you how this improvement can be tested so we'll say counting sort improved and here we'll put improved so we know which one it is we can overwrite these values at this point um, lovely okay so let's save this and we'll run it and see if that little improvement we made here makes much of a difference. So in this instance, it's taken uh, about, well, almost half 
ish of the time. That's a significant improvement. And what I want to do is I'm going to increase this range and we'll see if so this this improvement here you can see it's definitely doing something to help the more likelihood we have of zeros being present the more this improvement matters because as we have more and more uh, things in our count array that are equal to zero we don't really want to waste any time on them we just want to get past them quickly, 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 and then only add things that have a value to our sorted array. And this just helps accelerate that process. Now, there are two major limitations to counting sort. One is that it handles integers because we have to be able to do this index process by creating a count array. And of course, if you had any number between, let's say, 0 and 1 or 1 and 2 or 2 and 3, it's very very hard to generate a count array to sort those out but there are there are methods at which we can we can approach that problem the other major limitation is that as our range increases so that that variation between a minimum and a maximum the algorithm's efficiency decreases so if you have a very narrow set of values for example I don't know if you're taking a questionnaire and you know that the answers are between zero and 100, and you've got a billion of these results, this can work incredibly fast. But you have to consider the qualities of your data to pick the most efficient algorithm. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you've been enjoying this series on sorting algorithms. We've got a few more episodes to come, but if there's something you want me to have a particular look into, why not leave a comment down below and I can go and have a look into some of those exciting areas. If you have been enjoying these videos, why not subscribe to the channel and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye!